Alrighty, how you doing out there? Sure, truly, at this point, I talk about a bunch of things. I'm not going to get into uh, a lot of topics here. I'm not going to bore you with some details, you know. <laughs> Everybody wants details, yeah. Who doesn't, right? Kind of thing. Uh, but, yeah, we're not giving out details. We're just giving out the uh, day-to-day -day operations or the uh, routine, as they say in videos sometimes. The routine, I like to say, uh, is I like to... Uh, Mix it up there. I don't like to give out uh, topics. Topics can range many ways in many different <laughs> different nations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're, I'm not gonna bore you with details. I'm not gonna bore you with anything else that you need to know. Um, I'm gonna give you a different perspective, different uh, avenues, they would say. Uh, we're not gonna run any topics. We're not gonna talk about aliens. We're not gonna talk conspiracies. We're not gonna talk about any of those. Uh, UFOs related, uh, the cover-ups, you know the cover-ups as they say for UFO stuff, and the so-called real men in black, yeah, there is such a thing as real men in black. Uh, Dan Aykroyd has seen these guys. Uh, the real deal is not the men in black in the films, if you're related to that. It's not, it's not Will Smith, it's not, uh, uh, who's that guy, the other guy was Will Smith. Um, uh, it's not any of those guys. It's not the people in the big major film. Uh, yes. But in the real world, yes, there is such a thing as men in black. And these are, they're not, they're not, as they would say in a lot of those YouTube videos, they said they're not from any agencies or uh, any government uh, oversight. All they're there for is to make sure that you didn't see that UFO in the sky. Uh, they come and make sure that you, uh, they're... <laughs> Uh, what they were saying a long time ago, they're interrogate people. I hate to say that word. Yes, interrogate people. And uh, as your as your American uh, uh, Canadian citizen, they don't they shouldn't have to do that. But they do that because they don't want you to know about the UFO you just saw in the sky and tell about the details. And they interrogate people like that and uh, with a harsh way, with a harsh way, not a good way, uh, in a harsh way. Uh, they would say, I'll give you an example, I'll give you an example, people like an example. Um, these are real men in black, these are not the people you see on films. Uh, with Will Smith, that, uh, forget his name now. Uh, but yeah, um, what I'm talking about is the real deal, the real men in black, in not, in a fictional way, in a non film way, the real deal. Um, uh, there have been names thrown out there about what these people look like, the men in black. They wear, uh, they wear black suits, as people describe it as, uh, black suits, and uh, they have the black vehicle. Nobody drives a black vehicle, I'm just, I'm just saying for verbatim here. Uh, so, like I said, uh, folks, uh, this is the real deal. you got to be careful if you see UFOs in the sky. Uh, Hillary Clinton calls them a different, uh, different name. And, you can call it whatever you want, but like I said, these are not like your average airplanes that are up in the sky that fly straight and not like, you know, like you. UFOs do it, uh, they're, um, the guy that, uh, that worked on these things are, um, you may have heard about him, uh, way back in the early 80s, there was a whistleblower. He goes by the name of, you might have heard about him, um, this is a guy who got the, uh, UFO, uh, talked about it a lot, a lot. And guess what? He worked at Area 51, the, the place that everybody calls it. The Nevada area. I'm not kidding, folks. Nevada area. And, um, and like I said, folks, these, uh, this is a place where the government doesn't know about it, the public doesn't know about it, but, you know, be that it's me, uh, Google will let you know how to get there, fly there, whatever it takes to go there. Uh, but they don't allow you to do that. You can't fly over Area 51 or drive down Area 51. Uh, um, due to big signage, big signs. So as soon as you get near Area 51, this is a road, a dirt road. It's not a smooth road. A dirt road, according to the YouTube videos. Um, a dirt road. That it leads right up to the Area 51 of this uh, naval base. You, can, uh, you might you might be lucky to see this some aerial shots of the of the photos of the aerial shots of it. Yeah, it's an actual naval base, but it's secret. It's a very secret naval base. Uh, History Channel talked about it. 
uh, Lightning Life, I kid you not. And, uh, and they had people from newsrooms actually went down there and explained what this place really does. And uh, there's been, um, and people want to say who funds this. Well, we don't know. The question is, we don't know. Uh, is it still going to this day? We don't know. The question is, we don't know. I'm just paraphrasing for my uh, way I saw on YouTube videos. Now, this is just through people who've gone down there and can't pass a certain line. Uh, or, you know, Big Sign will tell you that. You can't take photos. No, you can't take photos, folks. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, these, uh, these, and they have a lot of cameras, surveillance cameras around the, the area of Area 51. When you get close to there, just over the hill is Area 51. You can't get close there. Um, but with aerial shots, with photos and stuff, you can see that if you're lucky enough. And, uh, yeah, from uh, satellite photos, as they would say, satellite photos, you can. Uh, just go on uh, Google, type in uh, Area 51 and photos. Uh, like I said, I'm giving you a clue. I'm giving you a clue. And, uh, yeah, this is the Nevada area. I kid you not, folks. The Nevada area. And that's where it's located. And uh, it's, it's extraterrestrial highway. That's where it's located. I'll just give you some clues here. Yes, uh, big sign will say it's a regular, like, a, a, a road highway sign. It says extraterrestrial highway. And I'll give you guys clues, but you don't, uh, promise me, folks out there, do not go there, okay? Many people have gone there and gotten shit for it. You know, um, <laughs> I kid you not. These two ladies got shit for it, really indeed. I'm not kidding. They went past a certain, you know, white line, and they got in trouble for it. I kid you not. Yes, they wanted all directions, and those directions were not the direction they want to go. Let's put it that way. So, yes, um, many people have tried to go there. Who funds it, we don't know. Um, but it's a secret naval base. Now, is aliens are there or not? Aliens, UFO, vehicles, we don't know. Um, they always talk about this Pier 19, Pier 18, I don't know. <laughs> They're giving you logic ideas, but... It, um, but yeah, I'll give you an example. Remember um, Roswell? Everybody talks about the so-called story of Roswell. Well, yeah, that is a real place. Uh, in 19, well, let me give you a, a history lesson here, folks. In 1947, yes, around that time frame, uh, there was a craft that landed near a ranch area. A ranch. You can vision, visual this kind of visual this uh, ranch. This guy was just working on the ranch, and all of a sudden, the so-called UFO, or whatever he calls it, landed at his ranch. What did he do? What does the question would say? Well, he calls the, the best, best six. I guess he told the army, he said, hey, we got a craft-like vehicle on our land. What should we do with it? And the army said, well, we'll come and uh, take it away, and we'll take it to some secret place. Yes. And that's the end of the story, they would say. Uh, that's their that's their, their explanations. Uh, we'll take it away, and uh, nobody will know about it. Kind of idea. Uh, and uh, yes, we have to form the uh, government. We have to form the uh, military. Uh, hey, we got this so-called craft-like vehicle on, on our land. What should we do with it? Kind of question. Should we phone up the uh, you know military? Should we phone up the government? And say, hey, we have this you know so-called UFO vehicle. And what should we do with it? <laughs> and yeah, um, but yeah, one did land. This back in 1947, they did have a press release. If you, uh, in those days, they would have press releases. And somebody in the military had to do it, had to read out what they saw and describe it. I forget the guy's name, but he was a, he was in a military suit, military, I guess you call it, in those days. Uh, with the uh, honors, I guess you call it. <laughs> I just described what I saw. These are from videos I saw, from photos I saw of it. Uh, in 1947, they had a press conference. This is a normal press conference. In those days, you couldn't hear what they were saying. Uh, so, they were talking about uh, uh, a balloon, 
they, it was a, like weather balloon. They would give you like a kind of a dodgy question to say, uh, we saw, we have a, a weather balloon. It was just a weather balloon and that was it. That was it. That was pure a weather balloon. We had a weather balloon up in the sky. It was up there. Somebody saw it. Yeah, that's a weather balloon. And that was the explanation they gave to a lot of, a lot of uh, viewers and, and uh, media people. Saying, hey, it was just a weather balloon. Don't get excited. Don't get excited. It's just a weather balloon. Just fell from the sky, came down, landed on a ranch by mistake. So there you go, folks. This is back in 1947. You know why I know this story? Because I've read, uh, watched YouTube videos, many, many YouTube videos about UFOs and aliens. Extraterrestrial kind, as they would say. And uh, the government and military are not too pleased when some so-called alien vehicle lands on anywhere on the planet. Anywhere on this green, green earth, as they like to say. And the government <laughs> and the military people get all well, they're not getting all excited, but they they want to get all people out of people's lands. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that's a uh, <laughs> so they they take it away and don't and they don't uh, they don't want to spawn a uh, a stereo, as they would say. So they take it away, and that's the end of the story, kind of thing. Yeah. And the uh, government will do something beyond that point. Yeah. Uh, we have an alien vehicle beyond our, uh, as they say, our procession. Uh, and what should we do with that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's been, they respond to many TV programs and a lot of uh, shows about aliens and alien crafts and. Extraterrestrials from another planet. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to delve into this sort of thing. I've heard people explain these things many times to uh, all times over. Uh, but originally, originally, when these uh, UFOs, uh, people say uh, UFOs will land on this uh, this world, yeah, many times. But they don't like to talk about. It. They like to do the hush hush kind of thing. Don't don't tell your fellow people about it. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, what you call, uh, an end story. Yeah. We just got a weather balloon and that's it. That's the explanation. And, uh, yeah, we're just doing testing in the area. Weather balloon. And that's it. Don't get excited. It's not a UFO. It's not, it's first year related. You know? If I were these people, the military or the, uh, government people, uh, I would say my explanation and the, and the media people would say, what? So, I'm trying to relate this to you, a lot of people. I've seen the TV show on this History Channel. That's this History Channel, folks. And, uh, yeah, so, many people get a, a field day, <laughs> as you're well aware of that. Uh, so, yeah, they start asking questions about alien craft in your possession. Uh, yeah, and they still ask a bunch of questions, like 20 questions here. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to scare anybody. But yeah, that's kind of what the, uh, and they, and the person, uh, does the, uh, you know, the press conference will say, it's only weatherman, uh, blue, everybody. It's not a alien craft. It's not a, you know, extraterrestrial lady. It's a it's weather balloon that's fall from the sky, came down by accident and let in somebody's ranch. You know, it's just it. You can take pictures if you want, but it's a weather balloon. It's not, a, it's not a UFO, it's not an alien terrestrial like. And uh, just bear this in mind, folks. So don't get excited. Don't get all excited. You know, don't get on your iPhones. Don't take pictures if you don't want to. It's just a weather balloon. We're just trying to weather related issue. Uh, and uh, we'll let you know, as the question would say, we'll let you know if there's an alien craft or. You know, it's a terrestrial like, you know, are they aliens, are they, you know, alien bodies, are they, you know, that's explanation. So, like I said, I know a bit of knowledge about this stuff, I've seen TV shows and YouTube videos about it, so I got an idea of what, what they're really talking about. Uh, there's been people who have actually seen these things, uh, close hand, uh, now, the word they would use, uh, in, uh, these are, uh, these are, explanatory situations. Uh, have they been inducted by aliens?
they would say. Uh, have they gone up to their ship and be in their alien ship? Uh, many people have many stories about this. Now, this is according to their story, not my story, folks. And, uh, yeah, um, and people say they had, uh, this is another, we're going into the conspiracy areas. Uh, and people have telepathically, the word they would use is telepathically, uh, they would talk to the aliens, and, uh, it's kind of weird, it's kind of weird hearing that some somewhat. But yeah, the telepathically, I don't know what that word is. It's hard for me uh, to say this. Uh, and, uh, let's look, it's, so it's a story about, a really true story, and um, these are the people that actually seen aliens, extraterrestrial kind, uh, little green men, I don't know what color they are. Uh, so, yeah, I'm giving you a description, and uh, it's not just airplanes in our skies, folks. You know, once in a while, we'll get these alien craft-like vehicles, they describe what these things are like in the skies, not like your airplane that flies above our skies. You know, ordinary airplanes. It's not like uh, one of theirs or anything. It's never, it's never like that. So bear that in mind. And uh, sometimes it's a little on the strange side, they would say. A little bit on the strange side. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're, as humans on the planet, we're so used to many things in our world, but not alien crafts or little green men or extraterrestrial, as a lot of people would say, in the world of today. But we know we describe, we describe these things as alien beings, alien beings. And uh, a lot of people have been abducted to, uh, uh, the word they would use, abducted from, from uh, alien craft-like vehicles. And uh, were whisked away up into the uh, aircraft and see what it was like in there. Usually against their will, I hate to say that folks, against their will. And we have, uh, we have no real intentions, as they say, but uh, apparently the alien craft is going to whisk us up to the alien craft, uh, some beam or something, <laughs> they would call it a beam, uh, not to be funny, folks. And this is a true story, by the way, this is a true story. And, um, yeah, and I'm living in the real world, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, and the military and... Government officials will tell you it's just a weather balloon. Don't go excited, public people. It's just a weather balloon. It's not an alien. It's not, uh, you know, extraterrestrial related. Uh, you know, of origin, as they say, the origin. Yeah. We're just trying to weather balloon. It's experiment. It's one of these, what you call experiments. Yeah. You know, don't get excited. Um, but yeah, a lot of things are strange in this world, folks. Don't question about it. A lot of things are strange in the world. But we need, we don't need alien vehicles. Maybe they're just looking at, you know, this world to see what we're doing. Not, make sure we're not blowing up each other. In this world. You know, like atomic bomb, you know, I'm just saying. Another atomic bomb would blow up this uh, world, but not many people do that. But in the 40s, they did. I'm not, this, so I know the history of this. So in the 40s, they used to take, uh, they used to do massive explosives. Massive explosives, like your TNT kind of explosives. And they experimented on this, and uh, yes, they did a lot of damage. <laughs> this is like atomic bomb damage. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, like, it's like hell on earth kind of thing. So, yeah, in the 40s, they did a lot of experimentation, as they would say, a lot of experimentation. Uh, the atomic bombs, you name it, blowing up stuff. They like to blow up stuff, you get it? I'm not trying to be funny, folks. Uh, they, they do experimentation. They call it experimentation, the word they use. Uh, see, if, uh, if an atomic bomb were to blow up a country, a world, and, uh, yeah, they did that. They did testing. They call it testing. And it's not to do with testing like the uh, pandemic, not that kind of testing. But uh, atomic bombs, see, we could blow up the city or a town, or a great no. and this was experimentation if you ask these people they would say experimentation it was a you know, big atomic bomb that would do it was like one of these tnt kind of bombs and it's loud it's loud so don't get near to these bombs okay it's loud it'll damage your eardrums yeah so be, uh, they always say how many feet you need to be away from it well at least 100 feet yeah. 
So if I've ever, you know, bowled a bit, you know, you want to be a hundred feet away from it. And, um, and that's what, what I mean, folks. This is just reality that, uh, I'm hoping when I leave this world, I'll see what aliens look like in another century, another universe, another universe. Even NASA is poking at the bit, saying we're going to go on different planets, different worlds, where we're going to have humans go on the planets. But, like I mentioned in a few videos, they get half the certain things like in the planet. They have water, air, water, air, food to eat, a house to live in, four things to go to another uh, planet, another world. You have to have those three things to live on. Yeah. Water, they need water, air, clean air, as they say clean air, if you ask me, clean air. Uh, and they need to have uh, food to eat. These are four things. And a house to live on. Uh, uh, in, a, in a suit. In a, some kind of a NASA suit. And uh, this is what NASA's doing, folks. And I'm not to say in a negative way, but a good way. Yeah, because as long as, as long as there's good air at, uh, at, in these planets, we're allowed to live there. Yeah. So we can breathe properly, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe one of these days in the near future, that's going to happen, folks. It's going to happen. So this is a really like a... Which is called, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out to you people. This is gonna be the best, not a rant, not a a, a comment or a statement. I'm not making a statement, just so you know. I'm not making a statement or a comment. I always say, like the fish, is this a comment or a fish or a statement you're making? Yeah, because I usually can tell if it's a comment or a statement you're making. Yeah, yeah. Or or is you want to uh, pick it or just do a you know. A, a press release. Yeah. Uh, I yield back. I yield back. I'm going to say yield back on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, that's my... Uh, it's not really a rant today. You can call it whatever you want in my podcast. Uh, but it's not a real rant. It's not uh, any of spiritual theories. Uh, don't <laughs> tell me it's not. But yeah, um... But yeah, yeah, we have a lot of strange things happening in our world. A lot of strange things. There's, uh, uh, there's, uh, what am I thinking? Oh yeah, there's potholes. Potholes, big potholes in the world. That's devastating. Uh, it could be like a, a city to city, big potholes. They're not small potholes, big potholes. And, uh, it could be happening in rural areas. It could happen anywhere. And this is sometimes soft ground, uh, because of soft ground. And it gives way, it gives way, big, big pothole, the size of the uh, area. And, uh, yeah, so there you go, there you go, folks. And, um, what else do you want me to talk about? Oh, yes, oh, yes, uh, one other thing that, uh, comes to mind. Uh, I'd like to, uh, let it integrate here, folks. Uh, I'm going to chime in, I'm going to chime in here. Uh, so, like I said, folks, this is just a podcast we're going to send out on YouTube in a few minutes. Uh, my podcast will be up there in a few minutes. And uh, I got a YouTube presence. Yeah, I got a YouTube presence out there. And, uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, by the way, folks, uh, I'm going to give you a, a word of advice. Always keep doing what you do out there on YouTube videos, whatever situation you're doing. And there's YouTube is community area, it's a community area, and there's a channel on your YouTube channel, it's a community page, and I appreciate it a lot, appreciate it a lot, and um, I'm happy what everybody's doing on YouTube, no matter what, if it's a First Amendment uh, audit, to, uh, to a lot of things, a lot of things out there, just do what you do best, just do things that you like to do in your own world, in your own world, that makes you happy, I always tell people, whatever makes you happy in the world, do it. Whatever makes you happy. You, you're the only person that makes yourself happy. If you're just uh, if you're disengaged to something, try to make it better. Try to make it better. Try to make it better for everybody. Yeah, we welcome that. We welcome that uh, things get better, not worse. <laughs> and we welcome that uh, sentiment. Yeah, bad, bad means good, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna. 
we're gonna w emphasize that with a lot of people out there. Uh, and the homeless is another issue. By the way, this whole town quarantine, uh, where Justin Trudeau, people are uh, put into a whole town quarantine. Yes, they're happening here in Canada. Uh, so people are going to hotels and being quarantined. Uh, this is Justin Trudeau do, as they would say. Yeah. And you can say to Justin Trudeau in the English language or the French language. He knows both languages. And uh, sometimes you can talk, uh, talk to Justin Trudeau in your French language or the English language. He knows both of them. So, yeah. Because all because of Quebec and Montreal, because that's uh, the province they speak in French. If you know the French language, that's, uh, Justin Trudeau knows that. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, folks. So anyway, I'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay tuned. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun, folks. We're gonna have very much fun. And uh, I yield back. I yield back for an hour. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 